Hey guys, and welcome back to the Prehistoric Life Podcast. I'm your host, Eric Crawford, and today, let's dive right into this beautiful dinosaur, Ned Colbertia. This will probably be a shorter episode because there's not a lot on this. I know that because this is the second time I've had to record this because the audio cut out in the first half of the original recording, so I'm redoing this, but it is a large... uh, well, not large. It's a theropod ornithomimid, so it's a ostrich mimic like dinosaur. Uh, so if you know what an ornithomimus looks like, which is the ostrichy. Actually, I can just pull this up and scroll down. This kind of guy, where he's got the beakish look and he's got the big, big claws with wings. He's got the long tail with the fluffy feathers and the big old legs. Um, but yeah, let's dive right in this. This thing comes in about 5 to 10-ish feet long. Uh, it weighs about 60 to 1,000 pounds, and it comes in about 9-ish feet tall. Um, its diet is lizards, bugs, dead animals, smaller animals, anything it can really get its jaws around. Its fossils were found in Utah, USA, North America. It's a medium carnivore. It is a theropod. It's probably an omnivore then because it probably fed on berries and whatever else appeared. Um, strong back legs for running. Probably lived in packs if it's an ornithomimid. Uh, it lived in floodplains, prairies, river lines, forests, mountains. Basically prehistoric Utah. Um, you use beak, claws, and probably even some kind of pounce kind of thing, like a raptor for attacking. Uh, it was named by J.L. Kirkland, B.B. Britt, C.H. Whittle, S.K. Madsen, and D.L. Berg in 1998, although it was discovered in 1993. And it lived from 129 to 125 million years ago. So if you don't know what that is, that is the Apatine to the Burramean. Of the early Cretaceous. So. Yes. That is Cretaceous like T-Rex. Um, Ned Colbertia was a carnivore. It lived in the Cretaceous period. And inhabited North America. Its fossils have been found in places such as Colorado. Quick facts. Uh, existed from 129 million years ago. To the Aptine age, lived in terrestrial habitats, was a carnivore reproduced by laying eggs. Two different species have been found by paleontologists. All the Ned Colbertia illustrations below were collected off the internet. All right. So, minimal information. So, three skeletons of a theropod was discovered in 1993 by Christopher Whittle near Seos in the basal yellow cat member of the Cedar Mountain Formation of Utah. Dating to the Valangian, these were sub, uh, subsequently uh, studied and reported in 1995 by Kirkland, Britt, Matson, and Berg. Though in 1996, it has been announced that the taxon, the taxon would be named Ned Colbertia Whitley in 1998. It was actually described and named by Kirkland, Whittle, Britt, uh, yeah, Britt, Madsen, and Berg as a type as a type species, Ned Colbertia, Justin of Amania, Main. The, gener- the generic name honors an, um, the American pa- uh, paleontologist Edwin Harris Colbert, known as Ned to his friends. The specific name honored. Justin Hoffman, a six-year-old schoolboy from New- Newton, New Jersey, a participant of a contest for children by Discover Card, the winner having a dinosaur named after him. So this kid right here had an entire dinosaur named after him. Lucky kid. The holotype. Sorry, yawn in here. The holotype CEUM5071. So I don't really know how to describe that other than like a serial number or kind of like a social security number for dinosaurs. But also just a way to like identify them. So if I were to like just go 
C E U M command C and then command V into a search bar. Command V into a search bar. It comes up with the fossils that you see, like the actual fossils of of this dinosaur. So it's the the fossils that were grouped together, that kind of thing. Um, is one of the specimens a partial skeleton lacking the skull? It belonged to a juvenile individual. The parotype uh, are the other two specimens, 5072 and 5073. All both are C E U M. Both fragmentary uh, skeletons, again, lacking the skull. They represent sub adult individuals. All three specimens were disarticulated and heavily eroded having been exposed to the surface before discovery they are part of the collection of the college of eastern eastern utah prehistoric museum the holotype ned colbertia has a length of about 1.5 meters 4 foot 11 inches the parotype though not yet fully grown were about 3 meters 9.8 feet Due to the conditions of the remains, information on the species is limited. The vertebra were not heavily pneumonized. Got to use their fancy words. Having air filled cavities. So. Trying to figure out how to pneumatized. Pneumatized. And it just means having air filled cavities. The th the thumb claws. The thumb claw was much larger than the second claw of the ham. The pubic bone carried a large foot with a very small and absent interior uh process, but a large posterior process. The thigh bone had a lesser torsion torsion tur. That was clearly lower than the greater Trojanter. The fourth Trojanter was well developed. The foot was not Archimedes. I'm going to assume that is just. Oh. Okay, so that's. Okay, so that's just like a weird part of your foot for anybody that's of like bird feet, for anybody that's questioning this. Um, I don't really know how else to describe it. It is arctometatarsal, arctometatarsal, which is that, I guess. An enlarged second foot claw was lacking. Uh, the describers assigned Ned Colberta with certain with certainty to the Tedeternian and provi provisional to the Celerosauria. A 2016 overview of Ornithomimosaur material uh, from the Aradel Formation of Maryland found Ned Colberta to be an Ornithomimosaur based on the comparison with the Aradel Ornithomimosaur remains, Harpia Mimus, and Nequibasaurus. Nequibasaurus. So, again, compared to other different species, changed from a just normal whatever theropod to an Ornithomimus. So, this thing is... So, they're probably guessing on the head, considering that we haven't really found one, so... They're probably saying it's beaked like a normal ornithomimid. Um, and that's probably what I would go with. And hey, if you want the chance to see these amazing dinosaurs that I talk about on this show, go check out Dinosaur Trips. Granted, they don't do completely 100% international. There's probably a lot of licensing and stuff that goes into that, and that's very difficult. But tell them that Prehistoric Life sent you, 
and you can there's I can most definitely guarantee you that there's one in Utah. I will 100% guarantee you that there is a dinosaur trips trip that goes to Utah, and you might even get a chance to see Ned Colbertia. If you do, take a picture of it, tag me in it, and be like, I used code prehistoric life on my dinosaur trips ticket and got $250 off my tickets. That's right, $250 off your tickets. Now, if you want to see their Instagram, they post a lot of amazing stuff on there. I do suggest going and giving them a follow. Um, there's their Instagram if you want to go check them out. Really amazing guy. I had an interview with them. He's really nice. Uh, now, I do want to take this time to say I get that the time of this recording is awkward. Because for y'all, it will be coming out after Camp Cretaceous. Chaos Theory. I will already have watched all of Chaos Theory by the time this recording is out. I can almost guarantee it. Um, but I am recording it before Camp Cretaceous Chaos Theory comes out. Like, the literal day before, the night before. It is currently 10.30 p.m. the night before Camp Cretaceous Chaos Theory comes out. I promise y'all, sometime in the near future... Once Jack O'Hara is free or Jurassic Fan Podcast or somebody, I will bring them on the show and we will talk about chaos theory and figure stuff out and talk about that. But again, I'm your host, Eric Crawford, signing off. Remember to go follow me on Instagram where you can actually stay updated with information like this. You get some pretty cool reels that are worth checking out. I spend a lot of time making them myself, I will say. Um, if you want to see my content early, well, these videos early, I try to post them two days early on my YouTube channel, Prehistoric Life Podcast, so please go check them out there. And if you're already there, please like and subscribe. If you're not there, please go like and subscribe. And if you want all of that in one place, go check out my website, prehistoriclifepodcast.com. Uh from there, you can get to my YouTube and my Instagram. And you can see all of the videos that we had. Like last time where we talked about chaos theory theories and movie ideas with Jack O'Hara. Love that dude. He will probably come on the show six or seven more times just to talk with about God knows what. Um, but... I'm your host, Eric Crawford, signing off. This has been Prehistoric Life Podcast. We've been talking about Ned Colbertia. I will see you all next time for some more Prehistoric Life Podcast. Probably another battle. I'm not even going to lie. Uh, but remember, keep it prehistoric. Goodbye.